Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Dr. Psych Mom Show. Today, I'm going to discuss this Scary Mommy article. Scary Mommy, I've been published on Scary Mommy many years ago. Um, it's a website for moms, and I'm going to be talking about this one article, which is kind of representative of the tone of many articles in what I'm calling the mommy sphere, and how the mommy sphere, the articles written by moms for moms, can be as toxic for marital expectations as the manosphere, which is articles written by men for men. Of course, not all of anything, et cetera, et cetera, but you know, uh, generally speaking. Before that, please do subscribe. My most recent episode was on why women hate arguers, which really uh, is true. So listen to that one and about 120 more probably by now. Okay, so... Um, I'm going to read you this article. So the title is, This Sex Therapist Explains Why She Makes Out With Her Husband Every Period, Single Period, Night Period. Subtitle, I Am Exhausted at the Thought of This. And it is in the, uh, the, the this category for real, question mark, of the site. It's 7.30 p.m. You just got the kids to sleep after a day of working a full-time job, meal planning for the week, helping the kids with homework, and fitting in a short workout. Like, okay, let's stop. Like, first of all, you know, it's like, okay, really? You know, like that is not um, what every single woman does by herself every day. So it's already starting this idea of like that you're super mom, martyr person, and on top of every other aspect of your life. And uh, and where's the husband in all of this? Because most of the time they're helping. But anyway, continue. You're exhausted. It's finally time to sit down, relax, and binge watch Love is Blind. But wait, did you have your nightly makeout session with your husband? A licensed sex therapist on TikTok is going viral after insisting that the key to a healthy sex life with your partner is daily makeout sessions. I have so many questions. Vanessa Marin shared in a TikTok video that she and her husband make out every single night. She believes that once the spark of a relationship inevitably fades, with every deep, passionate kiss or intimate moment, sex is expected. These kinds of assumptions and expectations can lead to uncomfortable moments, resentment, and ultimately no physical contact at all. Here's how it usually goes in long-term relationships, she begins. When you first start dating each other, it's like you can't keep your hands off each other, right? You're always touching, always kissing. But the pattern for most people is once they get into a long-term relationship, they really stop touching and kissing so much, and eventually it gets to the point where the only time that you're like really kissing each other is when you're trying to initiate sex. When couples hold on to this kind of mentality, she believes they can suffer from what she calls the bristle reaction, which is when you become so hypervigilant to your partner's touch or kisses that you could actually feel yourself bristle whenever your partner tries to come in and make contact with you. While it may seem counterintuitive, her perspective actually makes sense. She and her partner kiss intimately daily to help break the connection between deep, passionate kisses and the end goal of sex, so they're building physical intimacy while also setting healthy physical boundaries in their sex sex life. Science has proven that kissing causes a chemical reaction in your brain, including a burst of the hormone oxytocin, often referred to as the love hormone because it stirs up feelings of affection and attachment. This method could really work for couples who feel they're not connecting when it comes to sexual expectations. Research actually shows that once a week is a common baseline for sex, according to the experts. We wanted to give ourselves lots of experiences when we were making out and it wasn't leading to sex. Marin explained, our rule is we have to make out every single night and there has to be some tongue contact. All right, this sounds great. I agree, 100%. And in healthy marriages, this usually happens, you know? I mean, uh, making out with, with your partner, I, I say this all the time, and only rarely do I get pushback from men, and in that that's the men to whom I wrote that my post, if kissing is an implicit sexual contract, this is why your wife doesn't want to kiss you. Because for some men, they think, like, all making out has to lead to sex. Not all men think that, obviously, and it's obviously wrong. And, of course, if you can make out with your partner regularly without that every single time it has to lead to sex, then you can make out with them multiple times a day. You know, and like, I mean, I do that. She, this woman does that. That's like a good thing to do. So great. Article's great so far. I like it. And then we get, though, back to the voice of the writer. If you're wondering how, as a busy, tired mom, you're supposed to slip your hubby the tongue every single night, you're not alone. I, too, am trying to wrap my head around this, quote, rule she and her husband have implemented. 
Marin knows that many might question her approach, insist that these make-out sessions don't have to be like the hour-long ones you used to have in those first few spicy months of dating. So she's even, she's even like limited the honeymoon stage to like, you know, like three months, maybe max, which is not accurate, uh, or it shouldn't be. If we're really exhausted, it can be very fast, she explained. It doesn't need to take much time or much energy. However, she does insist that in order for it to be a proper make-out, there has to be contact of the tongues. One user commented, sharing the sentiment of so many women, is it bad that I get really tired of the thought of making out? It's sometimes a lot of effort for me emotionally and physically. Others were totally on board with Mara, noting that they participate in similar intimacy practices. We act like teens in the hall, sneaking grabs and kisses throughout the day, and it helps build fun tension, one user said. Another echoed, 22 years and we kiss and snuggle every day, even if it's five minutes. Is anyone willing to give this a try with their spouse and report back? I'll be hiding in my pantry in the meantime. Okay, so, like, you know, I mean, it's like I don't even need to talk anymore because, like, it was self-explanatory, but, I mean, I will because that's the point of why you listen. So the the advice is, like, so low level. It's so low level. It, it's like the equivalent of, like, an article for men that was, like, if you Windex the counter for one minute, 60 seconds every day, your wife will be happier. And then men are like, is it bad that I just want to go hang out in the garage and maybe jack off a little bit? Because, you know, like Windexing the counter for 60 whole seconds is like emotionally a lot. Like women would eviscerate that man, rightly so, you know? Anything that somebody says to do for your marriage that's like less than a fucking minute, you know, or less than five minutes a day that involves like keeping your clothes on should be thought of as like a real positive, you know, and I I don't know. It's like the tone is just it acts like every woman in her right mind would be totally exhausted by even the thought of this. And that's what I mean by the tone of the Mommy Sphere articles. First of all, we start with this conceptualization of the woman as a super mom who's doing everything. Her husband, it doesn't mention him at all helping, even though in the majority of cases he is. She's not doing all of that by herself unless she is a single mom, in which case this does not apply. And, like, she's supposed to be, like, so exhausted, yet she can binge watch Love is Blind at night, which is literally about love and sex. (laughs) And, but, but, but it would be so totally normative and expected that, like, instead of doing this thing, she would, like, be so emotionally exhausted that she would hide in her pantry away from her husband. So, yes, sure, there's a tone of joking, but it's a tone of, like, more, like, commiseration about, like, how much it would suck to make out with your husband. And if there was this on the other end, like, a tone of commiseration about how much it, how much it would suck to, like, help your wife for five minutes with anything that she wants per day, then it would be really, really, uh, you know, something that would make women extraordinarily mad at men, like the example I gave about the counter. So the, the mommy sphere frequently has this same type of article where it's like, oh my God, your husband wants sex. That sucks. It's horrible. You know, like, does he even know how much you do? And so women like, okay, so the average woman is still having sex with her husband, like about, you know, once or twice a week, you know, and the women who aren't, though, they read these articles and they think, oh, yeah, everybody's in a sexless marriage. And I'll get people in my office that say that. They're like, yeah, we have sex like a few times this year, but that's like normal, you know, because I read about it. I read about how tired women are, you know, and, and, and how all touched out they are. And so, you know, most of us really aren't having sex. And it's like, no, that's not true. You know, only 10% of couples are in sexless marriages as qualified by less than 10 times a year. And a lot of those are people are pretty old and like, you know, postmenopausal, etc. So the reality is it is it is very unusual. But yet, if you are in a sexless marriage, reading this stuff is going to make you feel like it's totally normal. And in general, that it's something to be condescended to and mocked that people could have any sort of physical touch. And it's very similar to the Manosphere articles or to porn, where guys get similarly, but on the other end, unrealistic expectations for their marriage and for their partners. Um, Like the guys who are watching a whole bunch of like amateur porn and think that like most women are down to just like record themselves having sex, you know, and or men who are reading stuff in like 
that, that think that their women are cheating because Manosphere articles are frequently written by these extremely preoccupied men who had childhood trauma and then got cheated on and then like all these terrible things happen because they, you know, pick bad women because of their childhood, etc. I've discussed this numerous times. And then they're writing about how like all women cheat. It's like, no, they don't. Like rates of cheating in women are very low compared to men. It's 13% versus 20% in men. And when I posted that actual uh, statistic, all these men were like, no way. It's like 85% of women. You know, I mean, everything I read on the internet says that women are cheating. Yeah, like no shit. So like the men that think that 85% of women cheat are like the women who think that everybody's in a sexless marriage. And so if you're reading stuff that amplifies your worldview, then you're just going to take from it what you can. And you are going to um, askew the rest. And when it's written in a very negative way about physical touch, as so many of these mom articles are, then, you know, women are going to assume that it's like normal and healthy to like not want any physical contact when that's really not normal and healthy within a marriage to not want any physical contact and to be disgusted and and exhausted by the fact of making out with your husband. Also, it's like, when would you have the time? In the actual example, the woman is situated for at least an hour, binge watch has to be at least an hour, possibly more, on the couch, watching a show involving attractive people trying to partner with one another, many of whom are making out. So, at least in later episodes of Love is Blind, after they meet each other, so it's not, at, and just from, you know, personal experience as a psychologist working with people, a lot of these women are also having a glass of wine then, and they're on their phone, and they're doing like a million things. Is, why is it so bizarro to think that at that moment you can make out with your husband for 60 seconds in the way that this acts like? You know, th this is the, I would expect a tone like this if it was like, you know, a licensed sex therapist says that a real good way to bond is to give your husband a blowjob, like, you know, every single night at 8.30 to completion and then maybe follow it up with a nice back rub. And the women are like, the fuck are you talking about? I'm exhausted. You know, all right, sure. This involves some, some effort, right? The, the other one doesn't really. So if it's so horrible for you to think about making out with your husband, that's really a you problem. It may be a him problem. Maybe he smells bad. I talk about that all the time. Hygiene, maybe he's a terrible kisser. But if he's not, if he smells all right and he's an all right kisser um, and you still are disgusted, it's maybe a you problem. It may be a terrible marital problem that you feel very uh, detached from him and, and your y'all's marriage is terrible. You should get into counseling. Um, it may be that you yourself are like very sex averse and, you know, need to work on that if you want to stay together with somebody in a romantic relationship. But I think that if you're disgusted by the idea of an open mouth kiss with your husband, that speaks to a larger issue that isn't just like, oh, huh, you know, I mean, everybody feels like this. So, of course, it's normal. It's not normal. It's not normal and healthy to be disgusted by the idea of French kissing your husband. I don't know if people say French kissing anymore. Um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, so it's just as crazy the tone of this and as toxic for marriages. And, you know, this is just one example. I could read you lots of articles, but it would bore both of us. Um, the, the point is this is just as toxic as the male manosphere articles that are things like, you know, like ways to fit in all, all eight sexual positions during a 15-minute encounter with your wife. It's like... No, your wife ain't going to want to do that shit, you know, and most women are not because, as I've discussed, that's porn montage sex. But, like, e either way, like, it's just, like, a, a very high bar, you know, for what you're going to do on the average day. And, obviously, porn I is even worse than that, right? So, it it's saying, basically, that women are going to be down to literally do the blowjob and back rub scenario that I said as a joke. It was a joke. <laughs> So, so the thing is here, you know, you got to think about the source. And if you are a woman that inundates yourself, uh, you know, I, I empathize with it because your feed, your Facebook feed and everything that Google looks for for you and in, in your, you know, recommended articles is going to be, you know, mommy sphere stuff a lot of the time. But look at the tone, you know, like, like, like think about how this uh, writer's husband may feel. Seeing her write that she'd rather hide in the pantry, haha, ha, than make out with him because even the thought of it makes her exhausted. You know, I mean, probably not great.
probably as bad as she would feel if he said, oh, my God, it's the day I'm supposed to compliment my wife. Oh, God, her love language is words, and I can't think of anything to compliment her on. I've been working all day, busting my ass for this family. Then I came home. I helped the kids with their homework. Then I mowed the lawn until it got dark out, and then I fixed up some shit that I had to do in the garage, and now she wants a fucking compliment. Jesus Christ, will my, will my trials and tribulations never end? I mean, you know, she probably wouldn't like him posting that in a national magazine. So anyway, you got to think about the source with these things. And you also got to watch out for the normalization of sexlessness and touchlessness because it is, in fact, not normal or healthy to uh, really feel disgusted and or, quote, exhausted at the thought of any sort of 60 second intervention in your marriage. And if it is, there are many reasons why it could be that are not just that every woman feels like this, including depression, marital issues, sexual trauma history, uh, anxiety, uh, uh, disconnect in bed from, you know, anything positive happening such that you have come to associate your husband with only negative experiences in the touch domain, lack of technique, lack of hygiene. I mean, there's like a million things here, but none of them are just like, oh, this is like a totally, you know, normal way for women to feel as disgusted by the idea of open mouth kissing with their husband. I'd quote exhausted. Um, all right. So uh, that's what I have to say on this. And I hope you guys found it interesting. And I will talk to y'all soon. Please do subscribe if you have not. And uh, if you ever do want to work on these issues, I have an intimacy coach, Heather, and I have a relationship coach, Kat. They both work for me. And if you're in my area, I also have couples actual th- therapists that are licensed therapists. But coaches provide, um, you know, much, much the same experience, quite honestly, particularly in the relationship sphere. And I will talk to y'all soon. Have a great day, guys.